How may the Sano 403 Phantom be used in ultrasound quality assurance to meet ACR lab accreditation requirements? The ACR website lists and gives a brief description in the second column here of eight tests to consider in required annual surveys of ultrasound scanners. Some of these tests are optional and some of them are required. Items on the ACR list include a physical and mechanical inspection of the scanner, and very importantly, making sure that the system display monitor shows all of the echo signals, grayscale values, and matches the gray values on the PAX display used to interpret the images. These generally are not done using a phantom. Items on ACR's list that are done using phantoms are evaluating image uniformity and testing for transducer element dropout, checking horizontal and vertical distance measurement accuracy, testing sensitivity for all transducers, and evaluating the contrast resolution and spatial resolution. These two items are said to be optional. Sun Nuclear's Sano 403 Phantom is shown here. It's a general purpose phantom ideal for the ACR tests. It's tissue mimicking, meaning it has a sound speed of 1540 meters per second. It's echogenic, so the background material looks like uniform tissue parenchyma on ultrasound images, and it, it has ultrasound attenuation properties that mimic those of, of soft tissue, including the frequency dependence, which is important if we want to operate our transducers at different frequencies, or if we want to utilize harmonic imaging mode. There are a number of interesting objects inside the tissue mimicking material. First, there are three groups of three anechoic cylinders whose axes are perpendicular to the side walls of the phantom. These have different sizes ranging from 6 millimeters to 2 millimeters in diameter. The phantom has a vertical row of nylon fiber targets, also oriented perpendicular to the walls, spaced every 2 centimeters primarily for distance measurement tests. And then we have grayscale targets, a high scattering cylinder on the far left, a plus 6 dB one and a minus 6 dB one, and another anechoic, a tenth anechoic object on the far right of this set. There are three sets of axial resolution fibers at different distances from the surface of the phantom, and there are horizontal rows of fibers that are utilized for horizontal distance measurement accuracy tests. We'll go through the ACR's annual survey tests that must be done for every machine and transducer used in an accredited ultrasound facility. The first is a test for image uniformity, and we'll demonstrate this using the L94 linear array transducer on our GE Logic E9 scanner. If the transducer is operating correctly, an image of a uniform phantom should yield a uniform image when you examine it up close to the transducer position. Loss of elements generally results in shadow-like artifacts emanating from the transducer position. The first thing we're going to want to do is disable spatial compounding on the scanner. It's called cross-beam on the E9 machine, but other manufacturers have different names for this feature. With spatial compounding, images are generated using beams traveling in different directions, and this tends to cover up the sometimes subtle shadows in the image associated with transducer element flaws. So the suggested instrument settings for uniformity tests are to disable spatial compounding, use a shallow transmit focal distance, and apply lots of frame averaging while you move the transducer in order to try to smooth out the speckle pattern somewhat. Then we freeze the image and uh, take a close examination of the result. This transducer looks quite uniform. I don't see any shadows, but there is this little bright spot that seems to emanate from the transducer surface. Uh, we utilize a four-point rating scale when we evaluate our transducers. Number one, no flaws found. Number two, minor flaws, but the transducer is still usable. 
Three flaws are visible, but still the transducer is usable. And fourth, replace the transducer. In the image on the left, we have an example of a curvilinear array transducer where we see three different flaws emanating from the surface of the transducer. Although contrast resolution and spatial resolution are not mandated in the annual survey, it's useful to generate phantom images that can help define problems which could turn up amongst these performance factors. We use a preset that's applied routinely for the probe to be tested. In this case, we're using a preset that sets the field of view to, so it's large enough to view our grayscale targets located at 6 centimeters depth. To be consistent with the orientation of the transducer, we rotated it 180 degrees. We see the highly echogenic grayscale target, the plus 6 dB one, and the minus 6 dB targets, and the large anechoic target right here. We also see the axial resolution targets at 3 centimeters and at 8 centimeters depth. This image will form a useful record that, shown the overall, that shows the overall image quality obtained using our standardized preset at the time of the annual tests. A third test done during each survey is to check on the overall sensitivity of the scanner. This will be done using a depth of penetration test. We set the image field of view to as large a depth as possible, set the output transmit level to 100%, which is the typical setting for most scans, but do check and make sure it is 100%. Set the gain so that you can just barely see noise, and then adjust the frequency, which we're changing here, so that it's in a mid-range of the frequency ranges available in the machine. Freeze the image, and then look at it very, very closely with your calipers, looking for the maximum depth at which you can see the background echo signals. Here we see the background echo signals. It looks like it's something on the order of 13.6 centimeters, which we'll hone in on, I think. And that's our DOP measurement for our fundamental frequency. We also do a DOP measurement in harmonic imaging mode. When this is activated, the echo signal's fundamental frequency components are filtered out, and the harmonic components are emphasized, resulting in a better image, better image quality that we can obtain usually than with, harmonic, with fundamental imaging. The same principle applies. Look for the maximum depth at which we can see the background parenchymal echoes the background echoes in the phantom, uh, ignoring the targets, of course. We're not looking at the line targets. We're looking at these background echo signals. This happens to be about 9.4 centimeters or so. We can't see the scale setting on this particular image, but it's right around 9.4 centimeters for our maximum depth penetration. The fourth test we carry out is to look at the geometric accuracy of the scanner, specifically how accurately our distance measurements done using a digital caliper. This is done using cursors that are set by the operator. There are two components, vertical distance accuracy and horizontal distance measurement accuracy. For this test, we've adjusted the field of view so that we can visualize reflectors down to a depth of around 7 centimeters. That might be typically used setting for applications done with this probe. We freeze the image, and of course we can see lots of structures, including the resolution fibers and the small 2 millimeter diameter and 4 millimeter diameter anechoic cylinders in this image. To measure the distance measurement accuracy, or the vertical distance accuracy. We place a cursor to measure the distance between two no targets of known separation in our vertical column of reflectors. Here we will use the shallow reflector and the, reflect and the deeper reflector. Always place the cursors so that they are measuring from the leading edge of one reflector to the leading edge of another. We get a result of 3.96 centimeters uh, within 1% of the actual distance here, which is 4 centimeters, so that's very acceptable results. We also assess the horizontal measurement accuracy of the transducer and system. 
Here we've generated an image of the top row of fiber targets. We'll set the cursors to measure the distance between the top two reflectors in the phantom. Uh, we always place the cursor in the middle of the first target and then extend it to the middle of the second target. These targets are known to be three centimeters apart. Our readout is 3.03 .03 centimeters, which is in excellent agreement with the known distance. Although ACR now lists distance measurement accuracy tests as optional, they're easy to do and a good practice for proper measurement method. And when using horizontal measurements made from images reconstructed from 3D data sets, it is still good practice to do these sets of, uh, of assessments. To summarize, ACR QA tests need to be done for each transducer and each scanner in the facility. Those done by imaging the Sano 403 Phantom include image uniformity tests, geometric accuracy tests, both vertical and horizontal, system sensitivity done using a depth of penetration, and this is done at both a fundamental and a harmonic frequency, and then the optional contrast resolution and spatial resolution could be done rigorously, but here we only generated images for qualitative assessments to be used from one annual survey to the next. These tests fit well within the intended applications of the Sano 403 Phantom. Besides its use for routine tests, such as annual surveys, we recommend that the test be carried out after a major upgrade, such as a software upgrade, to the ultrasound imaging system.